Welcome everybody to another video on The Long Dark, my favorite survival game that I've sunk hundreds of hours in. This is going to be part number four of our Loper School tutorial series. Zisto, you may be asking, it's been a long time since you made a Long Dark video, what's the occasion? Well, that's a good question, generic YouTube commenter who I just made up. The answer is that in just a few days, Tales from the Far Territory is going to release, or at least the first part of it is going to release, and it's looking like it's going to be the biggest, most significant update to the survival sandbox mode of The Long Dark since the game came out more than a decade ago. Hinterland has a website with the roadmap and a trailer and all the relevant information they've released so far. I'll put a link to that in the description of this video, but just to describe it in brief, it's meant to be released over a 12-month campaign with updates every 8 to 10 weeks. It's going to add new regions, new animals, new items. They're updating cooking and fishing. They've added a bird you can hunt and a mountain lion you can hunt or get hunted by, I guess. You can make a sled, you can find a trader, you can customize your safe house. And quite significantly, they're resetting animal spawns and item spawns across the entire game world. And while we don't know how extensive this update is going to be, I think that the relative value of the existing items will mostly be the same. So this seems like a perfect opportunity for me to make my first ever tier list video. So I found this tier list on tiermaker.com. I just did a Google search for the long dark tier maker and this came up pretty easily. It does seem mostly complete. Most notably it's missing the mag lens, which is kind of weird. So I'm probably gonna have to do some editing trickery to add a few items in at the end that I happen to notice are missing. And this doesn't include any of the new items coming in the, the new expansion that's coming out soon because I haven't played with those and I have no idea how good they are or not. It came with these default tier categories, but I think we're definitely going to change them. In particular, I'm going to add an additional row for items that don't even exist in Interloper because there are quite a few of those. So we'll say this category is called doesn't exist and I'll just make it gray, I guess. And then I think we'll actually keep the harvest category, but something you can harvest is more useful than something that's useless because it has a use. You can harvest it. So let's swap those around and let's make useless a different color. Green doesn't seem very good. Let's make it like red. Red because it's bad. Like stoplight red doesn't don't use. Terrible. So yeah, terrible item. Terrible. Terrible. Terrible items there. And then way up at the top, masterpiece is kind of a generic term. I'm going to make the top tier for the very best items that just outright change the way you play the game. So we'll just say game changing. Just beneath game changing, we'll go with uh, top tier, although technically it's second to top tier. These are the best items in the game. Very valuable, but they're not as impactful and singularly powerful and changing the way you, you play the game. And then just below that, we're going to change things up a bit because some items are heavy and you don't want to always be carrying them around. Some items you always want to have on you. So the next category we're going to call kits. These are items you always have on you on your person. And the next category beneath that will make base. So these are for items that are too heavy to carry around all the time, but they're very useful. So you want to have them at your base. Maybe they're a crafting ingredient, maybe they're particularly heavy, that kind of thing. And then beneath that, we'll have useful early. So things that are good in the first week, but then you quickly replace. And then I think we need one more row. And let's just call this uh, mediocre. Mediocre items that aren't that great. Mediocre items probably worse than harvest items, although it's not a straight linear worst to best. So after fiddling with some colors, I think we're ready to go. Sorry, purple, it's nothing personal. We can start off with the accelerant. Accelerant is definitely something that's useful very early on when you need to warm up, your clothing sucks. You can't really handle the weather, even if the weather isn't that bad. And later on, your fire starting skill gets good enough that you don't really need it. When you reach fire starting level five, you can start fires almost as fast as you can start fires with accelerant early on. So definitely useful early, but not as useful later on. This airplane food is the first item on the list, and there's going to be a lot that doesn't exist on interloper at all. So it goes in this gray category. These antibiotics also useful early in case you happen to mess up and get sick, but they get replaced by teas later on. Same thing with antibiotics. You replace those with old man's beard. Skill books are another thing that are very useful early on. I watched one tutorial of someone else trying to describe how to play on Interloper, and they tried to argue that you should save skill books until the end game. 
for when you, you have better clothing and it's easier to find the time to read them, I think that's exactly wrong. The best time to read skill books is as soon as you find them in the very early game when they have the most impact. One skill book can take you sometimes from level one to two, but if you're level four, that skill book's gonna make hardly a dent in your experience to get to level five. Arrowheads are something you don't usually carry on your kit, on your person, unless you've just harvested an arrow that broke, but it's definitely something, once you forge them, you keep around at your base to make fresh arrows from. Balaclava, really awesome, doesn't exist. Bandages, definitely a part of your kit. You always want these on hand. If you get attacked, you need to stop the bleeding. That's super important, or you're gonna die. And also useful if you happen to get a sprain in an inopportune time and you need to fix that right away. Next, we've got this little silly hat, which is not very good. Doesn't have very good stats, but it is easy to harvest. Takes 10 minutes to harvest to get one cloth. So I think we'll put that in the harvest category. Next up, we've got the bear hide bedroll, which I think I'm going to place in mediocre. Yep, mediocre. It is extremely warm. It does have its purpose. You can use it, but it does degrade really fast. So the only real use case for using these, and I think being practical with it, is if you're killing a lot of bears, you have a lot of bear hides curing, because you're going to need to repair it quite frequently. In comparison, the normal bedroll, I think, is part of the kit. You're always going to want that on you. Probably more than bandages, even. Let's swap those. Need to be able to sleep, and it's definitely better, in my opinion, than bear hide bedroll. Much lighter. Not as warm, but doesn't need to be. Next, we've got the bear coat, the warmest coat in the game. This is definitely part of your kit. It is a matter of personal preference, whether you wear one of these, two of these, one wolf coat, two wolf coats, or whether you use the moose coat. It depends on whether you prefer warmth over mobility, basically. That's the trade-off. One is heavier, but much warmer. Okay, next we got beef jerky. This is useful early as food. But later on, not too hard to come by food. Then we got birch bark tea. This is really useful for warming up. So it's useful early, but it's also pretty much part of your permanent kit to have teas on you. You warm up a tea, add a fire, and then drink it as you're walking through the cold. And it lets you travel farther. Takes longer to get cold. Really important. Also heals you 5% of condition, which is pretty good. Next we have the birch sapling. This is something you put in your base to cure until you want to turn it into arrows later. Not really worth carrying around with you. Nuts and stuff, useful early game food. Not much to say about that. Can opener, this is part of your kit, at least until your cooking level. One of your skills, you level up and you eventually don't need it, but early game, it's a pretty good thing to have. And then finally, we have the first entry into the terrible category. Technically, I think these exist on Interloper, but they don't really serve a purpose. On lower difficulty levels, you take them apart to get the lead for bullet crafting, but there's no guns on Interloper besides the flare gun, which doesn't use the same type of shell. So totally pointless and really heavy. Avoid at all costs. Next, we have another skill book, probably not quite as important as archery, but you'll probably end up reading any skill book you happen to find within your first few weeks. Matches. Matches are a part of your kit. I know that's a huge surprise. Very important to have. Probably the most important thing to be able to make a fire. These are the worst of the different fire starting methods, but it's better than nothing. Next up, we have the cargo pants. I think these show up on Interloper, and the fact that I can't remember whether they do or not probably tells you where they belong. They are pretty mediocre. Stats are really not that great for the weight. Next up, we have the cattails. These are almost certainly a top tier item. It is probably the best food source in the game. They're very lightweight. They never spoil. They'll never make you sick. And most importantly, they will never stink and draw predators to your location. So it's very useful to have 10 or 20 around for emergency rations. And it's really useful to have some of these tucked away. So when you need to push forward into a new area and you don't have food supplies there already, you don't have to worry about animals coming towards you as you get established in that new area. So I'll typically carry 10 or 20 on me at all times, but then I'll have a stockpile of them. So I want to go to a new area, particularly one I'm exploring for the first time, not familiar where the predators are going to be. I will hold 30 or 40 of these in reserve to take with me on these trips so that I can eat just those and not worry about smelling and also not worry about having to hunt anything while I'm looking around trying to figure out where the shelter is. Next up, we've got cedar wood. This is a pretty good source of fire. It's pretty well balanced, provides a pretty good amount of warmth, good duration, not too heavy. It's not the best in any one category. It can go either in kit or if you're trying to travel light, you can put it in your base. I think we'll put it in the, the base just because it is a little heavy. 
Next up, we've got charcoal. The only thing that charcoal is good for is map making. So if you're trying to learn a zone, I do recommend using charcoal to make maps. It's really nice to learn an area for the first time. It doesn't provide any actual gameplay benefit. So I'm not actually sure where to place this. Let's say we'll just keep it at the base for now. It would only be part of your kit if you're trying to map specifically. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't pick it up at all and it wouldn't even exist for you. So very situational. Let's just put it in the base for now. Climbing socks. Oh my god, these socks are amazing. Too bad they don't exist. Cloth is very useful. You want that on your person pretty much at all times, a few of them, and then a larger stockpile in your base for repairing clothing. Over time, you'll have less and less clothing that requires cloth to repair, so you'll want more animal hides and guts and leather, but you're always going to need it around in one form or another. Then we've got the best fire source in the game, bar none, the coal. It is definitely 100% a top tier item. It provides a ton of warmth, it's not that heavy, and it gives you about an hour of fire duration. It's not uncommon for interloper players to do entire loops through the different coal mine cave transition areas to pick up tons of this stuff to carry around with them at all times. You should always, if possible, have some of this around. Next, we've got coffee, which I think is probably something I'll put in the useful early on category. Provides you a little boost to stamina, which is mostly important when you're traveling around, looting up, getting geared up in the very beginning. Also helps with climbing ropes, but it's not as important once you're more established. And then, finally, we have the all-important, amazing combat pants. These are probably the best piece of clothing you can scavenge that isn't crafted from animal hide. So I think we'll put them somewhere like way up here. They provide the same amount of warmth as the deer pants, but they're not nearly as heavy. They don't have any windshield protection or armor value, so typically you wear deerskin pants outer layer, combat pants inner layer. I'm tempted to put them all the way up here because they're really just that good, but you're always going to be wearing them, so I guess we'll put them on the kit for now. Next we got the combat boots. These are pretty bad. I'm tempted to put them in terrible. I don't know if they deserve to go in terrible. They might be at the top of the terrible list. They're definitely at least mediocre. They're very heavy and don't have that good of stats. Yeah, I think we'll put them in terrible. They're not good. Then we got the pot. This is a part of your kit. It's super useful. You're going to need it to cook with and most importantly to make water. Now, whether you use two pots or two cans or one pot and one can is a matter of personal preference similar to which coat you use. Do you want a lot of water or do you want mobility? So like the coats, it's a bit of a trade-off, but you always probably want to at least have one at your home base if you're not carrying it around on your person. Then we've got another skill book. This one is cooking. You're going to be doing a lot of cooking and a lot of harvesting. So these two skill books, useful pretty early on, but they become irrelevant pretty soon. Cotton scarf, pretty mediocre. Could be in the harvest list, but also mediocre list. Cotton toque. This is a harvestable item. You'll wear it early on until you get something better, but you're quickly going to outgrow it, and it's not that useful anyway. And then, the Kawi chan sweater. Wow, this thing is so good, and it doesn't exist. Yep, doesn't exist. Next up, the crampons. A unique item you can only find in Ash Canyon in the gold mine at the very top of Ash Canyon. Difficult to get to until you learn the zone and the different ways to get there. This is 100% the first item on our tier list that belongs in the game-changing top tier, topper than top tier category. I remember before these were added to the game, I used to be pretty hesitant to climb ropes because of the amount of fatigue drain it would cause and how inconvenient that was. After these were released, I climb ropes all the time because they really make it just that easy. It really is just that easy. Also makes traversing weak ice easier because you get an extra second in your traversal, which is huge. And if you're running for an extended period of time on a very slopey slope and you're worried about getting a bunch of sprains, pop these on, no more sprains. They really do change the way I play the game. And I think they change the way a lot of other people play the game too. Then we got feathers. Keep these at your base. Make some arrows. Pretty straightforward. Same thing with Cured Hide. This is a crafting item for improving certain pieces of clothing, most notably your satchel, which increases your carry capacity. Pretty important. Deerskin boots are eventually going to become a permanent part of your kit. And same for the deer hide pants. Oh, and look what we have here. The flare gun. I think this belongs in the game-changing category, possibly at the very top of the game-changing category. 
This is like a get out of jail free card, but it comes with multiple get out of jail free cards. It literally shoots get out of jail free cards. Wandering around, got attacked by a bear you didn't notice was there, get out of jail free. Screw up a moose encounter, he's gonna attack you, get out of jail free. Wolf attacks you unexpectedly, get out of jail free. I forget what update added it, but at some point in the game's development, they added durability conditional loss to the shells for these, so they will eventually wear out and reach 0% and no longer fire. So there is a bigger incentive to use them early. They won't last forever, but still, I think, probably the most impactful item in the game. Dog food, yuck, gross, but in a pinch, can be useful early. The vest. There's two of these. I can't really remember the difference. One is better than the other, but I don't remember which one is which. You usually start wearing one of them, and you will quickly replace it, and probably harvest it. Then we got the driving gloves, which aren't that great as gloves, but they are probably the best and easiest source of cured leather in the game, which is going to be useful for repairing your satchel, and you can harvest them really easily, and they don't weigh much. So really useful to pick up for harvesting later. This next item is dusting sulfur. It's used to make gunpowder, which is used to make bullets, along with the lead from the battery, which on Interloper doesn't serve any purpose at all because you can't make guns or use guns. But gunpowder is also a form of accelerant for starting fires, so I think we'll put this in the base category. In order to craft gunpowder, you've got to get to an ammunition workbench, which is either in Bleak Inlet or Blackrock. If you don't know how to do either of those, you're new to Interloper, maybe don't really worry about the dusting sulfur. Next, we've got the Almighty Stim, an item so important most Interloper players have memorized every single spawn location for every Stim in the game. And it is definitely a game-changing item. I think it belongs way up, maybe just behind the flare gun. Not only does it restore 15 health in a pinch instantly, it also gives you a crazy amount of speed and stamina. So, for instance, you can use it to climb a really tall rope really quickly when you need to. All these game-changing items, it should probably go without saying, belong in your kit. So you should always have the flare gun, the crampons, and the stim on you. At least a few stims on you at all times. Zap! Energy bar! Doesn't exist. Go juice! Doesn't exist. Expedition parka! Uh, doesn't exist. Really amazing, but doesn't exist. Then we've got a skill book used for increasing your gun skills, useful only for starting fires. You get a little bit of a boost to fire starting if you start your fire with a book as opposed to a stick or a piece of cedar firewood. So your first few fires you start in the game, you probably want to use a book, and it may as well be this book because it doesn't serve any other purpose. Next on the list, we've got the fire log, which gives you a very small bonus to your chance to start a fire, but it is really heavy. It will burn for two hours, which is pretty good, but it's really way too heavy to carry around. I'm gonna say it's in the mediocre tier and really at the bottom of the mediocre tier. It's certainly worth using as fuel if you need it when you find it, but it's not worth carrying around. Next, we have another skill book, Starting Fires. This is a pretty good skill book. I'm going to put it right up here above Cooking and Harvesting. And then we got the Fire Striker. It has a higher chance of starting fires than either of the different match types, but that's kind of irrelevant because most of your fires you're going to start with a lit torch anyway. Most important, though, is that once you have one, you want to have a Fire Striker and one type of matches on you at all times. So when you start lighting a torch, it gives you the option of which you want to use, which prevents you from accidentally using up match after match every time you accidentally click your mouse button while carrying around a torch. Believe me, this happens, and it is important. Have a fire striker and matches on you all the time. Next, we've got fir firewood, which burns for longer than the cedar, but it's also heavier. It's definitely not something I carry around with me. It's definitely something I leave around the base, or whenever I need a long-duration fire, I may even chop up some fir tree limbs I see laying around the ground. Next, the fisherman's sweater, a really amazing item that doesn't exist. And then fishing hook and line, an item that you're not going to use too often. You will use it to fish, and if you ever run out of sewing kits, you use it to repair your clothing. It weighs almost nothing, though, so it's useful to keep in your kit all the time, just in case you need to fish. And in the very, I mean very, very late game, like more than 500 days into the game late game, you will be using these to repair your clothing. The flare is something that's useful very early on for starting fires if you happen to find one before finding matches or a fire striker. It's also useful for scaring off wolves because unlike a torch, it won't get blown out. Flare shells, these go with the flare gun. I'm just gonna put these down here with the kit to not clutter up our game-changing items tier. Then we got the flashlight. This is definitely a terrible item. 
You can find them, they are pretty rare. Their only use is to scare wolves during an aurora. And on Interloper, unless you're a psychopath, you should not be wandering around during an aurora. So, they're terrible. Fleece mittens are a very useful piece of clothing early on. You'll eventually replace them with rabbit hide mittens, but until then, they are going to be the best mittens for your hands. The gauntlets have pretty good stats. They're pretty heavy. They have a lot of defense and they don't exist. Crunchy Stuff is a candy bar. It's food, it's available early, and that's about it. Then we've got the gunpowder that we mentioned when we were talking about the dusting sulfur it's used to make. This is an accelerant that's useful early to mid game. And then we've got another skill book, which is only useful for guns. So for us, it's only useful for starting fires. And moving right along, we've got the hacksaw, which is extremely useful early on. Some people make this a part of their kit permanently, and other people drop it once they've crafted the hatchet. Just like which coat to use and which pot to use, this is also personal preference. It's useful early game in particular to saw meat off of animals once they're frozen so you can get food very quickly as your harvesting skill increases. You don't need this as much for frozen corpses, but some people prefer to use this instead of using up the durability of their hatchet. I tend to drop it once I have the hatchet, so I'm going to put it in useful early, but totally viable to use it in your kit forever. Then we've got the hatchet, which doesn't exist in Interloper. Nope, you gotta craft your own. And then after that, we have the very important hammer. You'll need to find one of these before you do your forging to make arrowheads and a improvised hatchet and knife. I tend to leave this at the forge after using it, so I'm gonna put this in the base category, but it is very important. It's also the best wolf defense, so it's also viable if you're traveling light to keep it on you at all times. Just depends on your play style. Whether you keep all the basics on you and travel light with maybe just wolf coats, or whether you keep the heavy stuff at your base and wear the heavier bear coat. Next is another tea. I'm not sure just visually if this is herbal tea or mushroom tea, but these are useful for traveling, staying warm, whenever it's cold. You always want a few teas of whatever type on you at any time. The sweatshirt is one of the clothing items that's useful early, but it will quickly be replaced. So we'll put this somewhere around here. Probably not as good as the mitts, but still pretty decent in your first week or so. The hunting rifle, really good, but also pretty heavy, but more importantly than anything else, doesn't exist on Interloper, so it goes in the doesn't exist category. Fishing is a skill that's only going to come into play in the mid to late game of your Interloper journey, most likely, and so it's probably going to be the least important of the different skill books, but you'll want to keep it around if you plan to ever do fishing. Improvised hatchet and improvised knife are very important parts of your kit. You'll always want to keep one of each of these around with you. Some people don't always carry around the hatchet, but I recommend always having one on you just in case you get attacked by a wolf. I've seen many a very late game Interloper character die because they only had the knife when they got attacked. But both of these are going to be extremely useful. I recommend both of them in the kit on your character at all times. And then the duck boots. Really amazing stats, but they don't exist. Oh wow, we're scrolling these items right off the screen. The jeans are an item that are useful early, but they will quickly be replaced. Fuel canisters are useful for filling up your lanterns, and they're also useful as accelerants, so we'll put them with the other accelerants. Ketchup chips are another item you'll scavenge early and not too important later on, and we've gotten to a point where I'm gonna have to start scrolling up and down. All right, let's scroll game-changing and top tier out of our list, because we're not gonna be accessing those too often. The hunting knife, another item that doesn't exist. Dress shoes are pretty mediocre. You're gonna spawn with these most of the time, but you wanna replace them as soon as possible. The light shell is a very useful item in your first week. It has really good wind chill for how heavy it is. So if it's your first few days and you haven't found a better jacket yet, you might wanna put this on on your outer layer just to protect against the wind as you're walking around. Let's put that just behind accelerant. Wool scarf doesn't exist on interloper, even though I think it's pretty good, although I don't really remember because it doesn't exist on interloper. And then we've got the Mackinac jacket, which is one of the better pieces of clothing you can find in the early game. And you may even want to wear it into the mid to late game under your outerwear coat. If you wear a bear coat, you might want a Mackinac jacket underneath it if you haven't managed to cure other hides yet. Eventually, though, you will replace it, but it is really amazing, especially if you find it in the first few days of game time. Then we've got maple syrup, which is pretty heavy, but also a lot of calories. So either chug it on the spot or deposit it into your base as some kind of Canadian trophy. I'm going to put it in useful early. 
Maple saplings you want to keep in your base, you'll need those to make bows. Marine flares are just like normal flares, except they don't last as long. They're more useful against timber wolves, and they're also waterproof in case you need to walk through a waterfall, although that is seldom very useful. For the most part, I just save them up for the eventuality when I want to go to Bleak Inlet or Blackrock, I guess, nowadays. Otherwise, not too useful. Very much a niche item. Oh man, this tier list is getting too big. Why does this thing not extend further out to the edges? It's just a website. I guess I need to scale it outwards. Let's scale down to 80 percent so this is a pretty small icon now i think this might be the mariner's peak coat and it doesn't exist on interloper wow sewing book is pretty good and it is consistently the hardest skill to get to level five so i think we'll put this at the top of the various skill books that are available in game this is i think the military coat also not available on interloper doesn't exist as well as condensed milk doesn't exist the moose coat is kind of a weird one. It is pretty heavy for the amount of warmth it gives, but it does give a lot of waterproof value and a lot of defense in terms of armor against animal attacks. So if you're a very aggressive player, you like to run around through blizzards and fight wolves with your bare hands and stuff like that, you might want to wear that. Personally, I've never really found the use case for it. The moose hide satchel is definitely one of the game-changing items. It increases your carry capacity, but it also has the indirect effect of making you move faster because movement speed is tied to the amount of things you're carrying in proportion to your total carry capacity. So not only can you carry more, but you can move faster through the world, which ends up being a very big effect on your character. And you'll eventually stack this bonus with the well-fed bonus and the technical backpack. And when you get all three, you're really going to feel like a superhuman character running around at warp speed. Suddenly the gigantic game world, which just keeps getting bigger, is going to shrink a little bit. You'll be able to get from zone to zone, from base to base much faster. It is a game-changing effect and piece of equipment. Okay, I think it's time for the lightning round. MREs don't exist. Mucklucks don't exist. This parka doesn't exist. Orange soda doesn't exist. Peanut butter, extremely rare. Kind of heavy like the syrup, but much rarer actually on interloper. Consume it when you find it. Don't carry it around. Bullets don't exist. Handgun don't exist. Oh my gosh, we ran out of space again. Other bullets also don't exist. This parka, I can't really tell because the images are pretty small at this point, but I don't think that one exists either. Then we've got the snow pants down here. They don't exist. We've got the grape soda. It doesn't exist. The Kawichan sweater, amazing stats, doesn't exist. And I think the rest of these actually do exist on interlopers, so let's scroll back up. Let's look at as much of the tier list at a time as is possible. Old man's beard dressing are part of your kit. They go along with bandages. Anytime you get attacked by a wolf or a bear, you're going to be in danger of getting infected. Use the bandage to stop the bleeding and the old man's beard bandage to stop the infection. Really important to always have a few of both of these. Pain pills are not that useful, but they don't weigh much. You can use them early game to get rid of the pain effect, which doesn't really do that much anyway, and you'll eventually replace that effect with teas. Peaches are kind of cool as an item for immersion factor. Finding canned fruit in the real survival situation would be pretty cool, but in the real game, they're kind of heavy for the amount of calories they provide. Plaid shirt. It's all right. Not really useful. Baked beans. Pretty useful early on as food, just like any other food. Also gives you a can if you have a can opener, worth mentioning. And then water is very easy to make in large quantities. You always want a reserve at your base and a little bit on you in your kit, on your person. You're going to die without it, but it is super heavy, so be careful how much you carry around. Keep a stockpile at your base and a little bit on your person at all times. Next up, the pry bar, an item that is definitely useful early on, although definitely not as useful as the hacksaw or a flare or accelerant or even this really nice clothing here. You'll be using it to open locked lockers or locked trunks of cars. And then once I get into the mid game to late game and I'm no longer in an area that has those, for instance, Hush River Valley, or if I've unlocked all the trunks, I've searched all the cars, I've searched all the lockers, then I will drop this at my base. I actually like to repurpose it by leaving it at fishing huts and use it as my designated break the ice device. So I think we'll leave this guy as useful early, but 
not really terribly necessary. Then we've got quality tools. These are super useful. You're going to want to keep these at your base because they are a little bit heavy, but they are super handy in particular for crafting arrows because they will cut the time it takes to craft your arrows, I think in half or maybe even more than that. I forget the exact number, but it makes it much faster to craft arrows if you have quality tools with you. If you're traveling extremely light, you're doing the double wolf coat thing and you're carrying like all of your main tools with you, maybe you keep these with you. If you're going bear coat, you probably want to leave these at your base because they are heavy. Let's put them something like this. They're associated with arrows, so we'll put them with the saplings. The rabbit hide mitts are part of your kit. You'll be wearing them until your character dies or until you stop playing. They are rather heavy for the amount of warmth they provide, so some people actually like to, to wear mittens or some other glove instead. But on the upside, you can repair them infinitely because rabbits are always going to be available. And then the rabbit skin hat, that is also going to be part of your kit. You'll be wearing that on your outer layer because it provides a nice amount of wind chill. Reclaimed wood is a pretty decent but not renewable form of fire fuel. Depending on where you are in the world, you may have none of this, you may have a ton of it. You may have massive piles of it, so it goes in your base. You may have only a few, so it may go on your kit. All these fire supply guys are going to bounce back and forth between your base and your kit, depending on your current needs and how much of them you have. The tin can goes in your kit along with the pot. Personal preference, whether you use two cans or two pots or one of each. Then this, I think, is the mushroom tea. And I think I mixed it up with the herbal tea. The herbal tea is actually really useful for recovering condition. You drink it before you go to bed, and then you get a bonus to the amount of condition you recover while you're sleeping. So let's put that at the top of the tea list. Oh man, this tier list just getting too big. We've got another book, but this is another gun book. So it's only useful for starting fires in your first few days. The gun cleaning kit doesn't exist on Interloper. And then we've got Rosehip Tea, which is not as useful as it used to be because it used to be the one-stop shop cure for sprains. But at some point they split the sprain into a pain effect and an impairment effect. So you use the bandage to fix the impairment and the tea to fix the pain effect. The pain effect is fairly minor, so you mostly be using these to warm up as you walk around. Running shoes, decent early game shoes. They're definitely not the best. They're fairly lightweight for the amount of warmth they provide, but they're not waterproof at all, which is not a good attribute for a shoe in the long dark. So let's put them way down here. And I think I actually put jeans in the useful early category. These are actually fairly mediocre. I'm going to put them way down here. Then we've got the crackers. Ooh boy, the crackers. These are, without a doubt, the number one first in class best food source in the entire game. I know I said that the cattails are the best food source earlier, but it's actually the crackers. Now I've seen a lot of other tier lists for this game that some people have made and they tend to rank the crackers lower because they make you very thirsty. But in the long dark, making water is extremely easy. It's the easiest thing to take care of in terms of survival. And if you want to, you can have just piles and piles of water laying all over the place. So these making you thirsty is not really a negative in my book, and they are an even more superior form of the cattails. They're just much rarer. They contain more calories per the amount of weight. They never spoil. They'll never make you sick, and they don't have a scent, so wolves and bears will never be alerted to your presence while you're carrying them. Mmm, crackers. Amazing. Okay, scrolling back down, we've got sewing kits. This is part of your kit. You're going to be using this to repair your clothing pretty much for the entire time you're playing. The game is big enough now that you probably are never going to run out of sewing kits as long as you explore enough. Then we got the arrow. The arrow is essential to your survival. You're going to need it to hunt animals, probably second only to your ability to start fire. Is your ability to hunt for food in the long run. And I guess making water, these are all pretty much parallel. Ability to sleep, these are your maintaining your, your four core attributes your fatigue, your hunger, your warmth, and your thirst, all pretty much equally important. Then we got the normal tools. These are not as good as the quality tools. They do the same thing. They speed up your arrow crafting, but not by as much. But I think if your quality tools gets a little bit low in durability, you can actually use the other tools to repair the quality tools. So it is kind of useful to have one of each, but in most cases, you only need one, and you would prefer the quality tools. Oh, oh boy. Now we got these things, the snow boots. These are... Since we just had the top tier best food source in the game, the crackers, it's kind of fitting that now we have the snow boots, which are absolutely the worst clothing item in the game, possibly the worst item in the entire game. They are incredibly heavy. They have bad stats for the weight. They are not worth using. You would be better suited to running around barefoot. I'm not exaggerating. They are terrible. Terrible. 
Then you got these ski gloves. I'm not exactly sure if these show up on Interloper. There are a few items that show up on Interloper that are seeming like they shouldn't, but they're very rare. And so I haven't maybe encountered these in a long time. They might exist on Interloper. I'm not sure. I'm going to put them in the doesn't exist list, but it's possible that they do exist. Oh, did I type in here? Let me fix that. Then we got the Ski Jacket. Ski Jacket is pretty good early on. It has similar stats to the Mackinac Jacket for the weight. It's just two-thirds of the weight of the Mackinac Jacket. Mackinac Jacket is 1.5 times the weight of this one and also has a similar... Oh, don't switch them around too much. It has a uh, similar scaling in terms of the warmth. So both of these are pretty good early game for warming up your character until you start crafting animal hide clothing. Oh wow, another terrible item, the snare. This used to be a useful item very long ago, but it's been outclassed ever since they added the ability to stun rabbits with rocks. Totally a waste of time to use, unless you're just bored, I guess. So let's put them down here with the batteries. They do technically have a purpose, so I guess they're slightly better than batteries, but not by much. These socks are just okay. In fact, they're just mediocre. And the only thing that makes them possible use for early is that there's only two different socks available on Interloper. But these aren't the ones you want. Let's put them in mediocre. I don't think we have enough items in mediocre. There's way too many items in useful early. Then we have the other vest. I don't remember which one is the better of the two, but in the long run, they're going to serve the same purpose, harvesting for cloth, and that's about it. The spray paint is kind of a boredom reliever. You can use it to make symbols, which will also show up on your map, but I've never really used it for its practical function for annotating the map. And I've never seen anybody else do that either. The use for spray paint more often tends to be, oh, I'm stuck in a house because there's a blizzard and there's a spray paint bottle here. Let's make a picture on the wall. And that's about it. I'll put this in mediocre. I get, yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll put it in mediocre. Next up, we have the ubiquitous stick. Available pretty much anywhere you are in the entire game, as long as you're outside. You're going to be using it for fire supplies. But a funny thing happens, it starts out as being just okay. But as your fire skill increases, the duration of your fires also increase. And so this thing ends up being extremely valuable. In fact, by the time you get to fire starting five, I'm inclined to put it up here in the top tier category. Because it's so widely available and it's going to give you so much duration on your fire in the long run, it's really going to give you a lot of freedom to create favorable situations, warm up when you need to, create a fire to scare animals or to, to cook food. Yeah, I'm going to say the stick is a top tier item. Extremely common, but still really good. Oh wow, we got to scroll back down. Scroll back down. Okay, the rock. At a certain point in the game's development, the rock went from kind of a worthless item and it switched places with the snare to being a really good item. It should be a permanent part of your kit, especially very early. It's useful in your first day. As soon as you see one or two of these, pick them up. You can use them to redirect some wolves. If there's some wolves in between you and where you need to go, you can throw a rock off in the other direction to distract the wolf as long as they haven't detected you. They'll hear the sound the rock makes off in the distance and go investigate that. And then hopefully if you did it right, you'll be able to sneak past. You can also use it with a lit torch to scare any wolf away which is also very useful. You can also use it, and you should use it to stun rabbits whenever you need rabbit hides, or you need some rabbit meat because you're starving. Pretty much a permanent feature of your kit, but how many you carry is really up to you and your play style. I would recommend at least one or two. The lantern is a useful light source, although it does get fairly heavy, so whether you keep it on your kit or around the base to use from time to time, that's totally up to you. That's a play style thing. Some people like to keep these in transition caves, and they'll pick them up when they need to rock through and just leave it at the other side. That's another thing you can do. Very useful in the long term, but also a little bit situational. This next item that looks a heck of a lot like peanut butter is stump remover. And it's used in conjunction with the dusting sulfur. Where do we put those? We put those up here in the base. You take these to an ammunition bench in either Bleak Inlet or Black Rock. And you can craft gunpowder, which is one of the accelerants. And it has five uses where this type only has one. Although this one is slower than the normal accelerant. It's definitely not necessary to have these, so let's put these actually way at the end of this list. And to be honest, totally valid to keep these in the don't exist for you personally list, but if you're comfortable going to Bleak Inlet or Black Rock, you might want to keep these around just in case. Next up, Summit Soda. That's useful early game food because it's calories and it's water, but it is fairly heavy for what it does, so you probably want to drink it as soon as you find it or leave it at the base for when you need it. Then we have the bow. Yeah, the bow is pretty important. I'm sure that's a big surprise. With the arrow and the bow, one of your most vital tools for long-term survival for acquiring food in the form of meat. 
Not much more to be said there. This sweater is not that great. I'm gonna say it's kind of mediocre. Same with this shirt, although this shirt gets torn up very quickly. And a lot of these items that I'm putting in the harvest category, I'm putting them there because they harvest very quickly. And then finally, we have another one of the best items in the game. The technical backpack isn't really an item so much as it is a character upgrade. You find it in the gold mine in Ash Canyon, same place you find the crampons. And it does the same exact thing as the well-fed buff or the satchel. But it's impossible to lose it like well-fed and you never have to repair it. You can't take it off or unequip it. It is a permanent buff. And just like the satchel, in combination with the satchel and the well-fed buff, it changes the entire game by making your character overall more mobile, more capable, you can carry more, you can get around faster, which in a way kind of nerfs the cold of the outside. Because even if it's super cold outside, if you're getting from place of warmth to place of warmth faster, then the cold is less impactful. Ash Canyon is a pretty advanced zone to navigate, but it is worth learning, in particular for this guy and this guy. Then we have these long underwears. These are the only thermal underwear type clothing available in Interloper, so they are literally in a class of their own. It's part of your kit. You wear them forever. Love them. Try not to lose them. And then the thin wool sweater is the best in class for your shirt layer, which goes underneath your jacket. Sometimes it can be pretty hard to find two of these, and my best tip for finding them is to go to Timberwolf Mountain, have a hacksaw, go down into Echo Ravine, Echo Canyon, and there's a plain container there. That one has clothing, and it will typically have at least one of these. Sardines is a useful early game food, but it does have the side effect of making you sick if the condition is low. So it's a little bit of a roll of the dice if the condition is kind of low. If the condition is high, it is useful because it's calories and a little bit of liquid content. So user discretion advised. Tomato soup, not that great as a form of food. It does provide a liquid bonus. It only has 300 calories though, so it is fairly heavy, extremely heavy for the amount of calories it provides. But just like any other food source in your first week, you'll take it when you can get it. The torch is definitely going to be a permanent part of your kit. You should always have at least one of these on you. In the early game, you're gonna have a ton of them because you're going to use them to chain together your fires. Walk with a lit torch. When it gets low, drop it on the ground and use it to light your next torch. So theoretically, you can light multiple fires with one match. If you're lighting a fire, don't ever light it with the match or a fire striker. Light your torch, then light the fire with that because it gives you multiple chances to light the fire. If it fails, you can try again instead of using multiple matches per fire attempt. This goes, I guess the order here is a little bit arbitrary. So we'll put it, I don't know, about there. Then we have the trail boots. These are probably my preferred early game shoes before I craft any shoes. The warmth bonus isn't that great, but they are 30% waterproof, which is pretty good for shoes. And they don't have a big stamina penalty either. So I would pick these over the running shoes or the work shoes, which we haven't seen yet. And then I think we are in the home stretch. I think it's time for another lightning round. This parka, guess what? Doesn't exist. It's really good, but it doesn't exist. These thermal underwears, they're amazing. They're better than the ones we get on Interloper, but they also don't exist. These mittens are incredible, but they don't exist on Interloper. This is a wool shirt, which is probably, I think, from memory, although I don't remember, I think it's better than the thin wool sweater. But guess what? Doesn't exist on Interloper. I gotta scroll down again. It's ridiculous. Then we got these work pants. I don't think these show up on Interloper. If they do, they're not great. So they're either in mediocre, terrible, or doesn't exist. I'm going to put them in doesn't exist because I don't think they exist. And it looks like we're down to only one line of items. Wow, we are almost done. The whetstone is a very useful item. It's going to be used to sharpen up your knife and your hatchet. Eventually, in the long run, you will run out of these. And so your options at that point are to simply make new ones, don't use them as much, or take your used up ones to Bleak Inlet or Black Rock to the ammo bench where you can sharpen them up. Then we got the Windbreaker, which is kind of like the light shell. It's lighter and it has good windproof value, just like the light shell. It's something you want to equip in your first few days of your character's life, but you will quickly replace it. The Wolf Coat is part of your kit. It's one of the end game animal hide coats, and it's up to you whether you use the, the bear coat, the wolf coat, the moose coat, and in what combination of those three. These wood matches are a superior version of the other type of match. They'll give you a slight bonus to your fire starting chance over the other match. But in the long run, it doesn't really matter. Next, we have the Wolf Took. This is an end game item. It's not just useful early. It's going to be a permanent part of your kit because you can only wear one rabbit skin hat. And underneath it, you're going to want one of these. 
Then we got the ear wraps. These are also a top tier item that goes in your kit. I'm going to say at one point I probably would have put them in top tier because these were the only items that goes in your accessory. But now we also have the crampons and we also have the moose hide satchel. They are extremely rare though. And it is the only clothing item currently available for your accessory slot. And it's probably going to take up a permanent slot there because the crampons are only going to be something you use temporarily. And as soon as you're done climbing the rope or crossing the ice or whatever, you're going to put your ear wraps back on. I think I'll keep those in top tier. Next we got this scarf. It's okay. It's useful early, but you're going to replace it. It's not quite as good as the wool took. The wool socks are the socks of choice for the interloper player. They're better than the other socks. You've only got a choice of these two. And so they're going to go on your kit on your person, you're gonna wear them forever. Then we got the work boots. These boots are okay early. It's up to player preference, whether you use the trail boots, the work boots, or the running shoes. And a lot of times it just comes down to which one you find first or in the best condition. And then last, we've got these work gloves. They're okay. If you find them early, use them. If not, don't worry about it. You can harvest them into leather, but they're not as fast to harvest as the driving gloves. So definitely I would say they're probably worse than those. So let's put those in the mediocre list. So that is the end of the tier list, although it is incomplete, it is missing a few items. Off the top of my head, it's missing the Noisemakers, which is used for stunning Timberwolves. I would put that pretty much the same place I would put any kind of Marine Flare. A niche item that you're probably not going to use too much. It's more useful to kill Timberwolves with a bow and arrow, and if you're not comfortable killing them with a bow and arrow, it's probably best just avoid them altogether. You can also find a bulletproof vest in Black Rock. I would definitely put that in the terrible category. It's extremely heavy and doesn't provide much value. It provides a ton of armor, but if you're getting attacked, that's a recipe for disaster. Eventually, you're going to just die, and it is a hardcore game. You only have one life, so if you die, your character is completely deleted. All your progress is gone. So the bulletproof vest would go in the terrible category. And speaking of terrible, I think I'm going to move some extra items down into terrible. We're going to take this fire log. We're going to move that down into terrible. We're going to take this spray can because it doesn't really do what the intended feature was, which was a map making organizational kind of idea. It doesn't really do that for a lot of players or not for any players that I'm aware of. So we'll put that down into the terrible category as well. Some of this food I'm tempted to put down into mediocre or terrible as well, particularly the ones that don't provide many calories or are going to make you sick, but that's very situational. If the condition is high, they're very useful early on. If the condition is low, then they, they would go here, and I, I can't put them in both places at once. It's also extremely hard to rank things in a strictly linear tier fashion, so I've tried to make a balanced list based on the actual circumstances you're going to find yourself while playing Interloper. And now that I'm looking at the top of this list, I'm reminded that this tier list, for whatever weird reason, is missing one of the most powerful, important items in the game, the Maglens. The Maglens lets you start fires without matches, or a fire striker, or a lit torch, as long as it's sunny outside, and it never gets damaged unless you happen to get attacked by a bear. And the effect of having a fire starting method that is going to last forever frees up your play so much that I would definitely put it in the game-changing category. You will be so much more willing to start a fire when you're never going to worry about running out of matches because you have a magnifying lens. So a sixth spot for the game changing category. Now this list also doesn't take into account any of the new items and there may be some balance changes or some new considerations that shuffles some of these things around when the new expansion is released. So we may do a short update video at some point to add the new items and shuffle things around wherever they need to go. But with that being said, I think this video is probably going to be extremely long already. So we're going to close it up here. If you have any questions or you disagree with where I've placed certain items, feel free to mention it in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Have a good day. Bye-bye.